Now, I would like to introduce Martin von Mackensen, a good friend of mine. From the name, you can understand he comes from Germany, where he leads an historic biodynamic farm and a school, a center interacting with the local community in an active way. But I know that he's also the person that put his heart in Italy, in a Divaira farm. You know, it's the largest Molise company, biodynamic farm. And I know that with research, through the research on seeds, Martin is very active. Ich spüre, dass Sie nicht mehr sitzen können. Hm. I really feel you can't uh, stay in your chairs anymore. And uh, yeah, I understand your pain. And uh, if you move a little bit, now I promise we'll, I'll take you on a trip to our biodynamical farm. But still, we must ask, why are we here now? It is very interesting, the fact that the world of economics um, has an eye for biodynamics. Obviously, we on our side uh, are interested to, um, in economics. But we want to ask this question. What is interesting in terms of biodynamics within the modern economy? But uh, I could answer the question with the title of my contribution today, that is to say, an organism that is being developed. And this is an idea. It's the basic idea of biodynamics. And I really think that this idea is an important contribution to biodynamics nowadays and for a modern economy as well. And I would like to show you this uh, via our business. I've been active there for 25 years. But before continuing, I really need your full concentration. We really need to concentrate and really think about what we mean by organism. It were very interesting if we could, for example, gather our different ideas and put them together and then create a debate. But I'll put it very shortly. For me, an organism is a series of organs that work together within it. And this organism has a skin. And then we go further with this skin, but what happens outside it is very different from what it happens from what happens in the inside and there are for example pieces of information with the communication with the rest of the world through the intellect and our soul And today, we heard Uli Ulta 
uh, who tried to explain to us what type of uh, money we have within this organism. And I would like uh, to go back to this question and to this discussion by uh, talking to you about the business where I work. Now you see here the picture where I, of the business where I work and it's close to a river. And obviously, you can see that it's very old, and it ha it has the shape uh, uh, which is uh, typical, like a rectangle. And that is because it was a part of a monastery, and uh, it counts uh, more or less two hundred hectares. But that just the the half of it. There are some more. Uh, hectares which are not displayed in this picture. And with time, we concentrated the animals in this area. And the forage well, we do not have enough room for the forage storage. Uh, we put it in another in another place. And the same goes for the storage of fruit and vegetables. We had to displace them from the center. And In the past, we could see a garden, a beautiful garden of the cloister that got bigger and bigger. Now you can see um, the areas used uh, to uh, grow fruit and vegetables. So we made it bigger. Just a couple of pieces of information in terms of geography. Okay, now you can see the city of Basel, and then you have the river and uh, the Rhine that goes up to Holland. And here you can see the mine that flows into the Rhine. And maybe you are well acquainted with the white spot here. That's where I started off uh, this morning. It's the um, where we take off, basically, the airport. But uh, this area is very interesting for the agriculture. It is very high, more or less 900 meters, and the level of the soil where we, we actually are is just 100 and then the mountains I'm talking about are um, in further away in the west. And it's an area that is very dry and warm. That is the reason why we grow wine there. Due to those mountains. So now you have a bit of ideas in terms of geography for this organism, but I would like to go further into detail considering the biography of it. And those were the founders who started off in 1968 with biodynamics. And they had four main objectives that still uh, are the main perspectives for us nowadays as well. And they wanted to further develop the bio, this biodynamics on the ground, so very practically. So we wanted, 
we wanted to create a kind of cooperation that would not be based on a hierarchical structure, just as we heard. But there is a third point that is crucial for um, the economic questions that we're asking today, and we've been speaking about it with the previous speakers. What kind of ownership do we need uh, in legal terms for uh, further developed biodynamics on the soil? Okay, this is the key question because we could operate in agriculture for years in a company or in a society that defines ownership in a difficult way, but it won't last forever. So right from the beginning, we must clarify the structures uh, of uh, the ownership itself for the soil. And for me, this should be uh, based on sharing. And the last point uh, of those four that I wanted to quote is about training, research and selection. But let's go back to uh, real agriculture. This is a farm that is located in a very dry area, but uh, we can um, uh, have cattle nevertheless. And there we can grow vegetables and fruit and it uh, is in a very uh, convenient area because we are close to a big city. But mainly, the area is uh, fine in order for us to grow uh, cereals. Though there are not many trees there. So, we could link this to what we've just heard regarding India. There are some trees here, as you can see. And this is exactly what has um, what can be considered as a fundamental part of a biodynamics. That is to say, creating landscape. And uh, I'll show you an historic picture. This is a picture taken 50 years ago. And it was taken by a few Britons during the wartime. And it portrays the same situation in this other picture that we had last year. And it's very interesting to notice that uh, there are just a few trees on the one hand, whereas uh, the landscape is different on the other one. But now you can see that the landscape is quite different now. For example, there are areas in the trees uh, where uh, cows can go and move freely. So lots, um, we have been doing a lot, but this is uh, possible just through biodynamics. Uh, this had nothing to do with the protecting the nature and the environment. And there are two ponds as well. So, now, how about crop rotation? Uh, 
Okay, the problem here is the fact that we uh, should uh, always check our organism uh, because being the soil so fruitful, we could uh, be too intensive there, but we shouldn't do that, otherwise we'll just destroy the soil. And then here you can see a crop for forage, uh, which is very important. and then twice cereals, and then you can go back uh, to fruit and vegetables. But in the meantime, I'd like to say that the interpreters are brilliant. But in such an organism, we must remember that we should keep the right number and typology of animals, otherwise it wouldn't make any economic sense. And this is an interesting question. We should ask ourselves why having so many animals is important and crucial for agriculture. We should ask ourselves this question and we should do that in the future. It's fundamental for the future of our economy. So I've already said that animals are not just important for the production but also uh, for the uh, fertility of the soil. And here you can see two of the pictures um, depicting uh, fertilizers and the compost of uh, uh, the business that we run uh, being examined by some student. Well, you can't really see it, but you can see the stables with more than 80 uh, cows in there. I'm sorry um, for the qu bad quality of the image, but those cows stay there during winter time and we get to a dropping mountain of two meters. And I hope I've given you some insight uh, in order for us to go on with this discussion. And now I would like to speak to you about the structure of the organization. And uh, we started off with agriculture in the first phase. But I've already said that part of the business has also to do with uh, research and um, education and selection. But we also operate in terms of processing, marketing and events. But now I'd like to provide you with some more insight uh, and then we'll go back. And uh, there, we process cereals, not just to produce bread, but also to produce some uh, nicer things, as you can see here. And for example, since we have cows, we process milk and uh, we then produce uh, cheese and we keep it there up for up to a year.
so there are different aspects which are interesting from an economic point of view. To be honest, uh, for a real cheese factory, the milk is not enough. We could produce just one type of cheese. But the issue with this organism is the fact that we are located just in the outskirts of Frankfurt. So we must produce different types of cheese in order for them to be sold by the people who actually come to us um, so that those people can find a greater selection, making it uh, sensible. And the same goes for uh, bread and so oven products, so to speak. But another interesting thing is that um, in this picture you can see the cafe that we have and it, it is right at the entrance of our farm but people actually want to come in, not just stay there because they want to be involved and now the question is how can we further involve them, uh, which is interesting from an economic point of view. And now during the last six months we've been organizing some tours and in this picture you can see a group of Asian um, customers. And a couple of ideas uh, for this uh, blue sector in the graph that I showed you before, so research. And then uh, Serial selection and the school. Three sectors in which we do not get any money. Though, in all those aspects, we should consider including a type of uh, economic profit, even though it is not really possible in uh, uh, practical terms, but we do have to include research and selection and training. You have already seen this, uh, this picture, and now that you know it from the inside, You can recognize all the different aspects. So the blue one is uh, the common good and then research, training and so on and so forth. And then you have commerce, processing and marketing. But what happened to the basics? So to the, the green area, the agriculture itself. Now, there are a further 140 businesses and partners that, uh, to be honest, are not even operating in, uh, as farmers. However, they want to be involved uh, uh, from an ethical point of view, they put forth their questions and they support us in our activity uh, with new ideas, financings and with their feelings as well. But then uh, they are also investors who have their money flowing into the above uh, shown uh, uh, sectors going back to the flows that we spoke about in the morning. And there are also customers in the other sector that uh, we've pointed out. So this is a model that we call agriculture community. In 
in our business, there are 140 farmers, so to speak. And now I'd like to show you what uh, was there 100 years ago. And please know that the people are really stiff there because 100 years ago, in order for taking pictures, uh, you couldn't move. And then you can see the horse. It's 1905. You can see the horse, and he it is carrying some fresh milk um, towards Frankfurt. And now please note that you can see the bulls here, they're actually going around freely. It is actually a field nowadays. And they're going around freely on the droppings, processing it. And uh, my closing remark would be, as a take-home message, a question. How will this look in a hundred years? And so you can see what was there 100 years ago. Now the things are completely different. And I'm sure that in another 100 years, we will find a completely different situation in our business, as uh, it is a florid business because it is linked to biodynamics. But uh, considering the future of agriculture in general in Europe, I would like to give you uh, this further insight. Thank you. Grazie Martin, così abbiamo avuto una visione su una... Thank you Martin, we had a vision on one of, an example of biodynamic agriculture for everybody.